Hey everyone, this is Evan with Tabletop Gaming Guild. Today I'm bringing you a review for the game Scurvy Dice by Firelock Games. It's a dice rolling game for two to four players. I'm going to take you down to the tabletop and show you what it's all about. So inside the Scurvy Dice here, you have this nice, really cool looking mat that you're going to play on. The entire board is this. So with the components, you have your um, ship cutouts here. You're going to have two sets of different die and you actually have pirate captains that you can be in and I'll go over what all those are. So the idea of the game is you want to get your ships here from the start and they're going to follow this track over here to the X which is the finish line. You can also play a shorter version which is only to the 10 here so whatever um, time frame you have to play you can choose accordingly. So this is a dice driven game and there's a lot of luck involved into it. So these die over here, these are corresponding to your ships, or to your ship, I should say. And you're going to roll them and you're going to assign them to how different things you want your ships. So as you can see, there's many different sides here. I'm going to flip a couple so you can see a couple different sides here. So going over the different sides that are on the ship here, so you have the parrots. Parrots are wild and they can actually turn into anything. You have the ship tokens here. So the ships are on the die correspond either to sails or hull. And we'll go over how I can actually assign these to the various points on my ship. The cannons are cannons. And the swords represent your crew. So the idea is you want to assign to the different points of your ship. So you want sails. That's going to correspond to how fast you move. Not so much down onto the track, but if you come down here and see the different phases, different phases um, are decided on who goes first by how fast your ship moves. So if you want to make sure that you go early in the cannon phase, the boarding phase, or the looting phase, you want to make sure you have a faster ship. The next die there would be the cannons. So on phase two, when you shoot cannons, you're actually just going to straight up roll the die, target whoever ship that you want to target, and then you'll do damage based off of what you roll. The next one is going to be these crew here. So the crew is used on the boarding phase. So you'll try and board somebody else's ship to steal pirate treasure, which we'll go over the treasure here pretty soon. And then you'll actually fight with the crew and if you can take somebody's crew completely out, you can steal any treasure that they have on their ship. The other part that's very important is when there's treasure out there and you're going to go get it during the um, looting phase, you have to have crew in order to get the treasure off of the island. Likewise, you also need hull. Hull is going to correspond to how many spaces of treasure you're going to have, spaces or die worth of treasure. So when you're taking treasure off the island, you may have to make sure you have one crew and one space per die that you're going to be taking off here. So as I mentioned treasure a couple different times, these black die correspond to treasure. So there's a couple different spaces on each die that correspond to one, two, or three gold. So you're going to have them rolled and it's going to show up like this. You can actually set whatever treasure up here on Pirate Island and any skulls over here on Island de la Muerta. Now we want to look at the dice that we have for our ship. So you can have one pair, that's all you're allowed to keep on your um, shipbuilding phase here. You can have as many of the rest as you want, but only one pair. The parrot, like I said, is a wild. So during the different phases, if you have a parrot, you can actually switch it during that phase to be anything that you want it to be to kind of help you out, shows that you're adaptable later on. But in the shipbuilding phase, you want to keep that. Any parrots that show up, you can just automatically change it to whatever you want. So right now, we've got three sails, three cannon, and two crew. Nothing for the hull. So that's not really good. So one thing you can do is you can take any amount of die that you want and you can reroll them once. So we're going to take this parrot here and we're going to move it and change it to our hull. We're going to take two of these cannons, we're going to reroll them. 
we got two more ships. That's what I was hoping for. We're going to put them here. One into the hull. I'm going to put one more here into the, into the sails. So everyone else is going to do the same thing and they're going to make their ship. Then we're going to follow through these phases here. So right now, then it would go into the cannons. So you would pick your opponent. You would shoot cannons at each other and go, all right, I'm shooting. I'm going to do damage to your, I can pick either hull or sails and they would just straight up lose that die. And then you put your die off to the side because you're going to recover that here in a little bit. Then it would continue on until everyone finishes with a cannon. Then boarding. So what's going to happen is, again, by whoever has the fastest ship, you can decide to board somebody. This one goes a little differently because you have to roll your ships and you have to exceed whatever they roll on their ships to catch up to their ship to be able to board. So it's, it's a two-step process. So I roll, say they, had, they only rolled one ship. I only rolled one ship, so I wouldn't be able to catch up, so I wouldn't be able to board. Let's just say I had that. I was able to catch up to their ship because they only rolled one. So once we're boarded, let me put these back. You roll your crew die. And instead of just getting crew, it actually goes to a scoring. So let me pull over the rules here. So the scoring right here is the fight points. So ships are worth zero. Crew on the die is worth one, can is worth two, pair is worth three. So you just add up what you have on your die. You compare it to your opponent. So the winner keeps their die. The loser loses one die. If there's a tie, both of you lose one die. At that point, the attacker can decide whether they want to continue fighting or not. And then you continue until the attacker says no more, the attacker has no more die, or the defender has no more die. The attacker has no more die, then just the boarding is straight up over. If the attacker just gives up, then you just move on to the next person for their boarding. If the defender has no more, you can actually go and steal treasure out of their hold. So we'll go over treasure in the hold here once we get to the loot phase down here. But I'm going to put these back like this. So that covers boarding. Next one is going to be loot. So loot. We need to get to Parrot Island because all the treasure's there. So it goes by the fastest ship. Fastest ship gets to Parrot Island first. So whoever is the fastest, so in this example, let's say I have the fastest ship with my four die. I get to go to Parrot Island first. I have nothing in my hold. I haven't got anything. So I have two crew and two hull and two hull points. That means I can take two die and claim them for myself. Then the next person does that and so on and so forth. If it gets to the looting phase and you have no crew, let's say that was my situation, I, my boarding went terribly, I got shot up with the cannons, no crew. You unfortunately get the scurvy dice. Oops, you get the scurvy dice. So, I definitely recommend following the optional rule in this game because the scurvy dice make you move backwards on the track. Actually, is better than the normal rules, but that's just my suggestion. But scurvy dice equals badness for you. So, after the looting goes, you'll refit. So what's going to happen is you're going to take all your die, you're going to re-roll them, and you're going to reassign your ship however you want to, just like we did in the beginning. And then after refit, you're going to do scoring. So scoring only happens is once all the treasure is taken off Parrot Island. So it doesn't matter if the scurvy dice are taken or not. If the tr all the treasures off Parrot Island, everyone counts up how much treasure they have. So let's say in that example, I had that, and uh, this was my ship. So I just count up how many coins are on each of the die. So four, I move four squares down, and then at that point you reroll all the treasure die, and you continue through the phases. The winner, like I said, gets either from to the ten or to the twenty, and that's the entire game right there. So. As I said in the beginning, there are optional pirate cards on here. And each of them give you a different ability in there. Like Johnny Bones, you can reroll any destroy true uh, dice after a melee battle. And here, Henry Morgan, choose a player, target player, must give you half of their gold buried this round, or challenge you to a melee battle to the death. But you do have to go, a duel to the death, ye li lily lover, 
Lynn Lubber, because why not? And so on. And there's uh, quite a few of them. In the artwork on it's really cool. It really fits with the, the theme pretty well. They're not quite balanced, but it has a little bit of funness to the game. So I'm going to take you up from the tabletop here, give you my final thoughts on this. So my final thoughts on Scurvy Dice here. So it's a really simple game. Um, you can play it there 15, 20 minutes. Um, plays up to four people. It's not a real tactical game at all. It's a lot of dice rolling. There's a little bit of strategy in how you want to set up your ship every round. And you want the game moves really quickly. Um, I played this last night with uh, someone else on our channel, Peter. Um, I, we, I taught him the game here in a few minutes, and the g game just kind of really took off once you got one or two rounds into it. it moves really quickly, moves really nicely. Um, it's a game that I would say you're at the end of a night of a game night, but not everyone's ready to go. You pulled this out. You don't have to do it's, you don't have to do a lot of thinking. It's not super crunchy, but it is still fun. So it's a game that if you just need a filler, really, um, I would say I would recommend this. And uh, go ahead, take a look. Definitely subscribe to our channel here if you haven't. Listen to our podcast. Follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. Leave us comments on anything that we could do better, anything that you want to see us do. And until then, we will see you later.